We built a pool. Hi everyone, it's Lauren Stark with Elite Realty and thanks for tuning in today. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about swimming pools, building a pool, maintenance costs involved with owning a pool and buying a home with a pool and things you should know. Summertime in Vegas, it's super hot outside. So having access to some sort of pool is such a benefit, especially in triple degree heat. When 2020 happened and everything was shut down, we kind of decided to take the plunge literally and figuratively and build a pool. So. Let me just take you guys on a quick little tour of our pool. So in designing our pool, we really like to swim. So we really wanted to utilize the size of our yard and build a really big pool. 40 feet is the minimum for a true lap pool. So it is 40 feet from here all the way across. I also wanted some nice decks to hang out on, some nice wet decks to hang out on. So we have this one big step here, which my dogs love to go on the step and cool themselves off. And on this side, we have another seating area space. That is my donut raft. I absolutely love my donut raft. It was $7.99 at CVS and I love that thing. Um, and this over here is a little bit deeper. So when you're sitting there, you are about chest deep. Also along the water spillway, we have one really long bench. So we really can entertain and host a lot of friends and family in our pool. Love the hot tub. The hot tub is located on the deep end section. So the deep end is over here and Travis really likes to swim. He wanted eight feet. I compromised with him to go about six and a half because otherwise it is just too much to heat up when it's not super hot outside. And then something that I've always wanted was a fire pit. So I went big on the fire pit. It's a 10 foot fire pit and it has all the pretty glass. And in the winter times, after taking a hot tub, we turn this on and it is just so, so pretty. I love my fire pit that we built and we had to put the glass barrier around it, obviously for safety and on those windy days. Of course, we had to have an outdoor television. So we really made our backyard like a second living room and we've found that we have utilized the space so much more than we did before it was just grass. So we actually did an owner build process which means that I designed the pool with the help of a pool designer, got all the plans done, did the permits myself through the city of Henderson and subcontracted out with each and every trade to build this pool. The reason we decided to go that route is I have a little bit of experience with construction, the savings involved, about a 30 to 50% savings. And also the pool companies didn't seem to be designing what I really ultimately wanted with the depth that I wanted and the size that I wanted. They kept trying to shrink me down and fit me into a box of things that they wanted to tell me as opposed to things that I wanted. So in actuality, there are not that many steps involved in building a pool. It's actually quite simple. Let's talk about designing your pool. You're going to want to know what type of design you want when you build your pool, whether you want something that's very geometric in shape or whether you want more of a free form look, um, whether you want kind of a lighter pool color or a darker pool color, just things like that to keep in mind. Pinterest is going to be your friend. I had a great designer who was extremely familiar with building pools from scratch and really walked me through the process. So first things first is the dig. Here in Las Vegas, we are on very hard soil and we have what is called caliche, which is a really hard lava rock. There is no way to determine whether or not where your home site sits, whether or not you have caliche. So it's just one of those things that 
Some people get lucky and some people hit caliche. If you hit caliche, it's gonna require the dig to come in with a jackhammer and it costs about $200 an hour to dig that hard rock out to get the depth that you are looking for. Luckily, we did not hit caliche, thank goodness, um, but we did have an involved dig process as our backyard was fully landscaped and had some very mature trees that we had to rip out before they could even start digging underneath. Be prepared for a complete and total mess when the dig happens. After your dig is complete, they are going to come in and you need to do the plumbing and the electrical. So you will have to have all your pool equipment on site in order for them to be able to do the plumbing. And they will set your pool equipment on a special equipment concrete pad and get that all set up and be able to do the plumbing. At that same time, the electrical will come in and they'll start setting up your panel and all the electrical that is required for the pool. Right after that is done, the steel comes in. That takes a day. It took about a day for them to rebar and steal the pool. Since we are in the city of Henderson, once um, the plumbing, the electrical, and the steel goes in, I had my first inspection, passed, no problem. Again, I was able to schedule everything online through the city of Henderson. The inspector came out the next day and then I could continue on. That whole process took about, with the dig, about two weeks. The next step is the shot creek. That's when they come in and they really put the form in of the pool with big concrete truck. And they come in and they spray the pool and that's when you get that gray smooth look. Something that I didn't know is that the shot creek has to cure for a good solid week. You really want that part of the pool to be dry before they add the next step, which is the tile. I had a lot of fun shopping for the tile. I chose an Aquabella tile and I absolutely love it. I chose a blue tile because I feel that the blue tile is such a timeless and classic look for many years to come. I know when I look for resale houses and I see that blue tile, it always is eye-catching, it always pops and it is kind of a timeless look. And then I went for a little bit of bedazzled jewel uh, in the water spillway features. Right after the tile was done, then they laid the formation for all our cool decking. I did choose cool decking as opposed to pavers or travertine. Cool decking is a nice clean look. It's relatively easy to maintain. And again, I was trying to keep my costs down. The deck also had to cure for a good week, week and a half. Everything needed to be dried before they came in and did the plaster. Plaster is the next step. We chose a quartzite plaster, which is actually just a plaster with a little bit of crushed up stone in it. And let's talk about pool color for a second. So I wanted a look like the Caribbean waters, kind of that crystal clear blue water. If you're looking for a darker pool, you're gonna do a, something like similar to Lake Tahoe. You're gonna want to go with a gray bottom as the sky here in Vegas is very blue and it's gonna give you that more darker effect of a pool. We went with a white plaster with about 40% blue quartzite and it gave us this color effect as you can see behind me. Once the plaster is done, you have to get another inspection. A couple of things to know is that your gate access for your pool must be self-closing. You also have to have the alarms on your door. Once we passed that final inspection, we were good to fill the pool. So we took a couple of hoses, filled the pool, and then we have about a, a 20 by 40 pool, so it's quite large. It took about two days to fill. Once your pool is filled, you cannot swim immediately. And this is something that I didn't really know when we built the pool. Um, you really have to let that plaster cure and you have to brush the plaster every day because there's so much plaster dust and the water is super murky and cloudy. We hired a startup company to come out and kind of go over how everything works and to get our chemical balance just right. I think that was a very important investment that we opted to do. It cost about $500, but he came out every day for that first week and brushed the plaster and then balanced the chemicals with all that plaster dust. The other thing that you need to know is once your 
pool is filled, then you need to call the gas company and have them come out and hook up your gas line to your heater. Another tip that I can share with you is landscaping. When we decided to landscape, we wanted to keep it really, really simple and very maintenance free and only have to worry about the maintenance of the pool. I really wanted to make sure that I picked plants and bushes that were number one, party to the heat because we're in the desert and it's so hot in Vegas in the summertime. And number two, didn't really shed their leaves um, either in the summertime or the wintertime because I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't be constantly digging leaves out of my pool at any given time. One other thing to note is that when you are re-landscaping, you're going to want to be very, very mindful of where you plant any palm trees. So palm trees are great because they don't lose their leaves, but you really don't want to plant any palm trees that is anywhere near where any of your plumbing pipes are running through. Palm trees roots can grow and they can get into the plumbing and just cause problems down the line. So, so let's talk about costs associated with owning a pool. Right now, everything is new for us. All of our pool equipment is new. We're still in the honeymoon phase. We absolutely decided that we wanted to have weekly pool service. For our pool, it's $140 a month. Uh, it's a big pool, it's 20 by 40, and we do have a hot tub as well. I think it's well worth it. They maintain the chemical levels. They brush the tile because we do have hard water here in the desert, so you will get some calcification on your tile and your water line. Our pool always looks relatively great unless there's a really big rainstorm or a really big windstorm. Over the years, um, you will have things like pop-up cleaning heads, O-rings need to be replaced. Sometimes the autofill valve is leaking. You will have to drain the pool and get it cleaned. You will have to replace valves. You may have to replace a creepy crawly, which is about $450. So just small maintenance items that will need to be replaced over time. Between our water bill and our electricity bill, I'm looking at about another $150 a month on top of what I was paying previously before I had the pool. So when you buy a home with a pool, I really highly recommend that you hire a separate pool inspector. Each pool operates differently. Some pools are newer and everything operates via an app on the phone. Uh, some pools operate manually at the pool equipment. A separate pool inspection is highly recommended. That cost would be anywhere from two to four hundred dollars. Lastly, how much value a pool adds to your home. So if you're buying a new home or you're buying an existing home that doesn't have a pool in it and you're thinking about putting a pool in, is it going to add value to your house? Yes, a hundred percent it's going to add value, but never the full amount of value of what the pool actually costs. That being said, it will make your home much more liquid. Here in the desert, more oftentimes than not, the days on market for homes with pools is much, much shorter, and you'll definitely get the premium associated with having your own pool, especially post-COVID when people really have changed how they live. Well, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you haven't yet already subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all on the next video. Bye for now.